Here's how to create AI SEO content that actually ranks using nothing but free SEO tools. Step one, find the right SEO keywords. Go to Ahrefs free keyword generator and enter a topic you're trying to get more traffic for. In this case, I'll use pizza ovens. Now let's assume you have a new website without much authority. That means you'd wanna target keywords that you can actually compete on. So click on the questions tab and look for keywords that are long tail phrases with five plus words, more is better, that have low KD. And don't worry about volume because data on long tail keywords is inaccurate and there's a compound effect when you target many long tail keywords. I've selected how do wood fired pizza ovens work? Step two, check the competition on Google. The main objective here is to see that there are pages ranking that are not fully optimized for the exact keyword phrase. So simply search the keyword phrase and see how many pages are perfectly optimized. In my example, there's only one result that's truly targeting this keyword. That means we should pursue it. Step three, create your SEO content strategy. Now you're going to use the free version of ChatGPT or Google Bard to create an SEO content brief brief for your article. Use a simple prompt like so, and then it'll spit out a solid outline like this. Step four, create one section at a time. Sign up for HubSpot's free AI paragraph rewriter tool, create a new blog post, and paste the outline from ChatGPT. Then highlight the intro section, click the lightning icon, and click expand. HubSpot's AI will then write this intro section for you. Then just go section by section and generate the content. And don't worry about editing or formatting at this point. We're just looking to create as much depth as possible, and then you'll use your brain to make it better. Now, once you've generated each section, you can then use HubSpot's tool to shorten long-winded sections. For example, I highlighted the intro and used the shorten option to make it leaner. You can also highlight any section and modify the tone of the content. And this will vary depending on your target audience, but HubSpot gives you five options for friendly, professional, witty, heartfelt, and educational. So just go through your draft and modify the tone based on your unique audience. And I'll have a special link below this video for you to sign up and use HubSpot's new AI tools. They're 100% free and there are no strings attached. Step five, edit the content. So open Hemingway Editor and throw your draft into it. Now go sentence by sentence and improve it based on the recommendations. Now once that's done, throw it back into a Google Doc, go to Tools, Spelling and Grammar, run the check and fix everything you find. Step six, grade your content with AI. So open ChatGPT and use the following prompt to grade your content. And keep in mind that ChatGPT is a language model and it will spit out different scores if you rerun this same test. But with that said, I've tested this prompt many times and it generates varied but similar results on average. So based on ChatGPT's recommendations, clean the content up, and now it's time to move into your content management system. I'll be using WordPress for this example, but you could also use HubSpot CMS from earlier in this video. Which brings me to step number seven, which is optimize your content. Now it's time to optimize this page for SEO. So we're gonna do a, a couple key things here. The first thing we wanna do is we want to put the keyword in the most important spots on this page. So. First place is obviously in the title. Okay, so we're gonna put the full keyword in the title, make sure it's there. And one thing to consider too is when you're using WordPress in particular, you have to remember that the title that you put in there is actually gonna be the H1. So if you go over here and you download the detailed Chrome extension, you can quickly see the heading here. And this is the H1 that we're looking at right here. Now, if you don't fill in the title tag, which I'll be showing you in a second, it will automatically be placed here in the title. So. You know, you don't technically have to do it. It's probably gonna happen automatically, but just keep that in mind. They are technically different. This is technically an H1. And if you look at it in the code, you're gonna see that over here on the left-hand side, you see that this is an H1. There are a couple key places you wanna have the primary keyword. Number one is you wanna have it in the URL. So if you go back into the CMS here, you can see here in the URL, you wanna have that full keyword in the URL. That's really, really important. Put it in the URL, put it in the H1, most importantly, put it in the title and the meta description as well. So to do that, we're gonna scroll down here 
and we're gonna look for Yoast, okay? And there, there are a lot of different SEO plugins you can use on WordPress. You can use Yoast, you can use all-in-one SEO pack, and you can use Rank Math. Those are really the three biggest ones. So it, it's really gonna be a matter of preference. And what you can do here is with Yoast, you can actually put a focus keyword in here. This isn't the best way to optimize this page. It's not gonna give you the ultimate super technical knowledge for on-page SEO. You would need to use a tool, an on-page SEO tool like Surfer, for example, to go a little bit deeper on this. But this will give you at least a good baseline. And it's also free. First of all, we wanna make sure that, as I mentioned here, the primary keyword is in the title. So what Yoast will do automatically is it will just pull the title from the from the page and put it in here. So if that title's sufficient, then just leave it at it as is. And then the other thing you can do is in the meta description, you know, you can write this yourself or you could use AI, okay, to generate it, right? But you do need premium. Now, with that said, you can just go into ChatGPT and have ChatGPT write this meta description for you. You just say, write a meta description for the keyword, you know, how do wood fire pizza ovens work? And that'll take about two seconds. Then we go in here, we put it into the into Yoast tool so we can see the SEO analysis. There's a bunch of stuff here you can dive into, obviously, and it doesn't hurt to go and fix all of these things, okay? But at a bare minimum, like bare minimum on-page SEO, what we wanna do, as I mentioned, is want keyword in the, in the title, or H1 in this case, keyword in the URL, keyword in the first sentence, okay? Always try to get your primary keyword in the first sentence. So I always like to put it in the first sentence. Occasionally I'll bold it and italicize it just to really emphasize that that's the primary keyword of this page. There's not necessarily gonna have a huge effect doing that. I've, I've tested it, there's not a substantial effect, but regardless, you wanna at least get it in that in the first sentence. So title, URL, first sentence. Then I'd also recommend getting a variation in the H2. You can see this is an H2 tag and I have benefit Benefits of wood fire pizza ovens. Okay, so it's not an exact match of this primary keyword, but it's a supporting idea that is relevant to the main idea. So you don't want to just take this keyword and repeat it again in the H2 because you're really not doing yourself any favors. We want to try to get more variance in the content because that helps. We're tapping into Google's NLP algorithm, which is natural language processing. And then you may want to put it one more time here in the last paragraph, but after that, it's really just getting in the title, getting in the meta description, and that's bare minimum on page SEO. Okay, that's You've done a good job if you've done that. There's obviously much more you can do when you start to look at what Yoast gives you. I recommend doing all of this stuff because why not, right? It's gonna, it, it definitely is not going to hurt you to do this, okay? So the next thing here is this is more, we wanna think more beyond just on-page SEO. I wanna think about how is someone going to consume this content? What can we do to get them to actually read this, to actually consume it, to give us positive user signals on this page? And for me, the first place I love to start is right in the intro. This intro here, I actually wrote, but you could certainly have ChatGPT write you a, you know, a catchy intro, uh, a snappy intro. You could certainly do that. Um, but for me, I have found based on the thousands and thousands of informational pieces of content I've created or optimized over the last 10 years, short intros are best. Short intros that preview the content um, and in the context of informational content are the best, right? You preview the content, you, 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 inject some open loops into the content and that incentivizes someone to want to actually consume this content. So for me, I usually just do about one to two sentences here and then I give a little preview of what is going to be in this post, okay? And what you can do too is you can actually, you can link these as well. So what you can do is you go over here and we can actually, we'll go over to this section here and in this little list here, we can go to the heading and if you go over down here in advanced, we can do an HTML anchor, okay? So if you wanted to have a jump link on this, this post, you could just do something like benefits, okay? In the anchor like this. So all you have to do is go right back up here and do the link and then you're just gonna do a hashtag and you're gonna enter what you put in as the jump link and just do this. And now when we go and preview this, what you're gonna see is there's gonna be a nice little jump link here. And this is important not only for uh, users, but it's actually helpful for Google. If you do this the right way, these could actually show up in the search results as well as site links. But really, we're not doing it to manipulate Google. We're doing it to make it a better user experience, okay? So people can jump around to what they're actually interested in, right? So if they just wanna you know, learn how to use one or they wanna find a recipe or whatever it is, they can click and it will take them to the section that they wanna go to, okay? It's really helpful, just makes the overall experience much better. So I would invest a lot of time just getting this little section here right, because if you don't get this right, you're not gonna get someone to read the content. Okay, you, you gotta get this right. Then from there, once that's done, now it's just a matter of going through this content and making it much more readable. Okay, so take advantage of headings, 
separate the content, make it more readable, okay? You don't want huge blocks. I would recommend no more than two to three sentences per paragraph, okay? So, you know, we're taught in school to do five sentences per paragraph. That is not the case when it comes to content online, okay? That's, those are, those paragraphs are way too big. So I basically would start splitting these up. That's the first thing to do is just start splitting things up, making it easier to read. Then we'll keep going through here, keep splitting some of these up. And then obviously we'll wanna add some headings in here, okay? So make this an H2. And we'll just keep going through here and improving this, all right? Making it more readable, making it better. The next thing I wanna do is once we have, once it's more readable, we've added you know various things. We split up paragraphs, we've added headings. We've actually used some bullet points here as well. So I don't actually recommend doing it like this just because it really doesn't look great. So I would probably shift this more to a heading-based situation. So instead of having it kind of like that, I'd probably just do kind of like a list post like this. And then I would just break this up like this. That way it's much easier to actually catch these these line items, okay? And notice that what I'm doing is here, you know, I have the H2s and then it's followed by the H3 because it's in this same category, all right? So you're not gonna, you wanna make sure you're, you're putting the headings in correctly because a lot of people don't understand that you wanna have logical headings. And just as a general side note, we wanna have one H1 per page, okay? So this is our only H1 that we have. Anything after that, we're gonna have an H2, Okay, and then we're gonna have an H3 if it's a subtopic within this main category. Okay, and if there's another thing within this category, you could go into H4 or H5 and you could keep going down the list. Okay, so just continue to go through and get this all cleaned up and get readability where it needs to go. And then once that's done, the next thing I like to do is I start to think about uh, links, okay? I wanna find, if we're talking about various things in here that uh, should be cited, okay, we need to go and find those citations. And citations are really important because it shows Google that you're actually a resource, all right? You're citing your sources. So when you create it, when you write a college paper, you have to cite your sources where you got the information. So it's the same thing when you write informational content. So in this case, like in this history section, it's talking all about the history of this. So what I would do is I would start to do some research to find places where I can actually cite this information, okay? so. You know the Greeks uh, and in Naples. Okay, so we could talk about you know wood fire pizza ovens, uh, and then I'll just look up Naples. Okay, and hopefully we can find something. We could even do maybe like history and see if something pops up. There's one already here about the history of wood fire pizza ovens, so that's perfect. There's another one here that's actually from an Italy-based website. That's what I like to see. I like an Italy-based website or a government website or an EDU website. Those are great. So I would probably just like link link, you know, maybe wood fire pizza ovens here and I would link out to it and we put that link in there and make sure if it's an external link, we go and open in a new tab. If it's an internal link, you don't need to do that. But if it's external, proper UX is to link out uh, or is to open in a new tab or a new window. Then from there, once we've got some external links in here, I'm usually trying to place, you know, anywhere between let's say five to 10 high quality, relevant external links into the content, okay? Then from there, you can go and start to look for internal linking opportunities. So if you've already written content that's in some of these categories, look for places to inject some internal links. This is, this is really, really important because it helps Google crawl and index your pages better. And it also helps you build more topic authority because you're starting to pull these different topics into one particular cluster. You're, if you're trying to rank better for anything related to pizza ovens, or even specifically wood-fired pizza ovens, we wanna to start to create a lot of supporting content around this topic. Because the more content you see around this topic on the website, the more Google's gonna to start to understand that you are an authority in this particular vertical. Very important. You can do a lot with one post, but it's much better to be able to, to, to build those supporting posts around the main idea as well. And now let's move on to step eight, which is make your content visually appealing. We've talked about basic on-page SEO, we've talked about optimizing with Yoast, we've talked about readability, We've talked about injecting links. Now, the final piece of this puzzle is we need to start thinking about multimedia, okay? And multimedia is really important because we wanna be able to break this content up. No one wants to read some super long piece of content without any, any breaks in it, okay? The images should add to the content. And what you don't wanna do is don't just add images in here as decoration. That's a huge waste of space. It's a waste of the user's time. Like if you have to scroll past some decorative image just to keep reading the content, you're not doing them any favors, okay? That's not a good idea. So what I would do is I would try to find some sort of images or videos that ultimately that amplify this content, make this content more interesting. So if you don't have any videos to use, then go to YouTube and find some relevant videos and inject them into the content. Uh, you know, two, three videos is really good because what it can do is 
If you put a video in here and someone watches a video, it's gonna increase the engagement on this page. Now, it's debatable whether Google can track that or not and whether it varies into the overall rankings in Google. But for me, I don't think about what's gonna manipulate Google's algorithm. I think about what is best for the user, right? And we're thinking about what can we put in this content that's gonna make people stay on our website longer? What's gonna make people stay here and start to you know, actually increase their dwell, dwell time, their time on the site? The truth is every big website that you care about, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, all these huge websites, their number one goal is to keep you on their website because the longer they keep you on their website, the more money they're going to make. And this is the same with your website. Doesn't matter whether you have a business or an affiliate website or whatever it is, you want people to stay on your site because the longer they stay on their on your site, the more trust that is built, the more that and it increases the likelihood that they could actually convert. Okay? So, last piece of this puzzle is find some find some relevant videos if you don't have any yourself. And then go into Canva and you can create at least a featured image. I would bare minimum create a featured image for your post, okay? So all I did is I just went into the templates here and I just searched like pizza, okay? Um, and I found one that was relevant. I put this little template in here and then I just updated it to be relevant to what we do. Nothing complicated. I don't have any crazy design skills, but this is perfect. Now it's a highly relevant image. I'm not saying these are necessarily the colors I would want to use, but this is just the general framework here will work. And then you go into here and we go to post and you just update the featured image right here. Okay, that's all you have to do. Update the featured image with that. Now you have a nice featured image that's relevant. And then whenever that gets shared on social media, this is what will pop up uh, as the image. Okay. And then finally, you know, if you can start to look for opportunities to inject more relevant images in here, you should do it, okay? I'm always thinking about how I can make this content more readable, easier to read, whatever it is. Anything you can do to, to make it easier to read is gonna be a good decision. So that's all you need to do to do some basic on-page SEO. And now it's time for step number nine, which is promote. So now it's time to publish, but you're not done yet. Go through your website and look for internal linking opportunities. And this will help Google crawl and index your new page easier. Then go into Google Search Console and paste your URL into the search bar. Click on Request Indexing, and this will schedule your page to be crawled by Google. And now it's time to acquire some backlinks, but before you can do that, you need to create some assets that are link worthy. Watch my next video on how I use ChatGPT to create link bait from scratch without any coding experience.